So let us try to imagine just for a minute that you were born onto this earth having never been indoctrinated into any type or kind of belief system and you had no knowledge of celestial mechanics and no knowledge of astronomy or cosmology and then let's say that you were presented with two scenarios to literally explain the world in which you inhabit it. So scenario number one is that the material plane on which you exist is called Earth. The Earth is a planet, it is round, and it is one of many planets that are being hurled around the thermonuclear furnace called the Sun. The Sun exists at the center of the solar system and itself spinning through space and it is roughly 93 million miles away from us, the sun. So the earth has a heavenly object that revolves around it and it is called the moon. And we exist in a galaxy, a spinning mass of stars that is just one of trillions with a T of galaxies in the entire universe. Scenario number two, the material plane on which you exist is called Earth. The Earth is a flat, immovable plane surrounded by an enormous ice wall keeping in the salty oceans. The Earth is held up by four pillars and there is a firmament arcing over the skies, encapsulating everything within. The Sun and the Moon and the Milky Way and all of the stars and the heavens revolve around the Earth and the infinite space was created solely for humankind based upon the fact that we can't get out. So sit back for a second and think. You're either told that you are living on a flat, immovable plate or that you are on a spinning blue marble coasting in the middle of a vast eternal sea of stars spinning around a gigantic burning ball. But the questions will always be the same, guys, when it comes to the truth. And, well, if science or scientism didn't create us or the aliens didn't create us and why the need to find this out, well... I never was a religious person until I became a believer in the flat earth science. Now there's always been questions that I've had which are personal, but we realise that instead of making the Bible agree with science, science must agree with the Bible. If it does not, it is only because it is science falsely so called and not real science. Science here is the Latin word for knowledge, guys. Whereas very much of what goes on by the same name of science today is just not science at all. It is only hypothesis. So read man's books on so called science and you will get tired of the never-ending repetition of such words of hypothesis, conjecture, uh, supposition, etc, etc. This is the reason that such theories, which are falsely dignified by the name of science, are constantly changing. We talk of the science of geology or of medical science but guys if you actually read books on geology or medicine for example written 50 55 years ago that you will find that they are now quite out of date but the simple fact is the truth cannot change truth can never be out of date what we know can never alter this is or this of itself proves that the world science is wrongly used when it is applied 
only two hypotheses which are merely invented to explain certain phenomena. It is not for such theories that we are going to give up facts. It is not for conjectures that we are going to abandon truth. The whole point of Copernican theory is to get rid of Jesus by saying that there is no up and no down. And the spinning ball thing is just, it just makes the Bible a whole joke. But some real evidence and some real questions that need to be answered is why every time then that ISS is above the earth and everything is supposed to be spinning at some incredible miles an hour um, from you know 17,000 to 1,000 miles of the equator. So many theories that uh, you know blow your mind but the bottom line still remains the same then. So if everything is trapped and we don't feel it's spinning. So when ISS is then a ball, how can we never see the Earth spin? How come it's always stationary? And how come then that all the video footage that we had from the Apollo, the Gemini missions, then that the Earth was always stationary? And then let's think about this then, if you watch the Hollywood movies and movies of today and anything that actually represents a globe, air quotes, that the Earth is always represented as a stationary ball. So when you watch your movies of things, Star Wars, Star Trek, when they fly out of a planet, the planet is always stationary. Um, hmm. That really, really bugs me because I don't seem to see anybody really noticing this either. That any planet that is, you know, being flown into surely is spinning at some point. And Hollywood knows how impossible that would be to create a spinning ball where things are flying into it. Which I would like to raise that question. The Earth's supposed to spin, but we don't see it. The Earth's supposed to curve, but we don't see it. Many questions, no answers. Apart from what, guys? The simple fact will always remain the same. The Earth has never been a ball. It has always been a flat, immovable stationary plane. Very simple, very straightforward. We've just been lied to by clever people, but not clever enough. This was Nibi's upload. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. As always, tap that subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I wish you a very, very, very good day. Good luck to you all. Take care.